Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing our work with creating our enemy for our simple platformer game. And for this activity, we're going to be taking a look at making the enemy object itself, putting all the code in there to allow it to simply walk around. Later, we're going to add the components to stay on the ledge so we don't fall off. And then get the interaction with our axe and the bullets so that way the enemy object uh, can die whenever it gets hit. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and go to our current enemy object. I'm going to update it and rather than using that sprite, I'm going to be grabbing my enemy astronaut sprite. Now that we've got the enemy astronaut as our sprite, I want to double check to make sure in the room, uh, testing room, all right, everything looks good. Uh, I'm gonna pick them all up a bit so that way they're not uh, potentially inside the ground. If uh, the, They shouldn't be in the ground, but sometimes weird things happen. I'm gonna lift them all up, they'll just fall down. But there, we should be good with that. Now, if we jump into our enemy object again, let's go ahead and add a create event. What do we do when this gets created? Well, let's go ahead and initialize those variables. So we're gonna create a couple of things. We're gonna set the gravity for this one uh, our enemy is 0 0.3, that's how many, that is the acceleration due to gravity that will pull it that many pixels down. Uh, the hit points, uh, I'm gonna start off with just five. Flash is set to equal to zero. Let me minimize this, we don't need to look at that at the moment and increase the size of this uh, for your viewing convenience. We're going to set the direction that they get hit from, set that equal to zero. And then finally, we're going to set, are they currently on the floor? Uh, starting off, we'll just set that to false. Now, this is not all of the variables that we were going to create. In fact, we need to, in addition to this, create some variable definitions. This is a new thing that we're going to be messing around with. The convenience with this is that this allows us to change values in the room setup where you can drag an object into the room and change the numbers for that instance individually rather than for all of the enemies. And so a couple things I want to set in here. I'm afraid of heights. And this is going to be a type Boolean and we're gonna set this to be true by default. We're gonna have our horizontal movement speed. This is gonna be an integer. And we're gonna have our vertical movement speed, vertical speed, also an integer. And so by default, I want my little enemies to walk back and forth at uh, three pixels per frame. Okay, so we have, uh, or per step, uh, we have those variables declared or defined here. And then we have gravity, hit points, slash, hit from, direction, and on floor created over on this side. So that handles our definitions that we need to create at the start. We now need to implement our movement logic. Let's go ahead and add a step event. And so at our step, this will handle our movement logic. And inside here, we simply just do the check, are they on the floor? Well, uh, we're just uh, checking if they are standing on the wall object, then let's do our movement collision check, do our gravity and sprite 
direction check. So see how much easier it was to create this because we have made all of those code chunks that we had to define the player's movement as scripts. Since a lot of it does roll over, we of course don't need a jumping component and a few of the other ones that we have or the keyboard portions. Rather than having to copy and paste that entire thing and delete the parts that we don't need, we've turned into scripts the smaller parts that are relevant and we just call them over here. So now the step event for the enemy object is very simple. It's only four lines right here. We'll add another line later. But uh, this gets us uh, that set up. And we should be able to test and see it at least walking around. They'll eventually fall into the little gaps. And so assuming I have everything written correctly, we should be good. All right, let's go to my testing room. We see them, uh, they all just run towards the wall. And that's it. We currently have no interaction with them. Uh, oh, the ax does just delete them whenever it hits them, uh, but that's uh, currently it. Because our ax did delete the previous boxes that we had. but that's all uh, that it does at the moment. But the reason why it's not turning around is because with our code, uh, our movement collision check just says if you're running into the wall or well, you can't run into the wall, so it stops you from running into the wall and that's it. For a player, well, you can simply go the other direction, but the enemy doesn't have that uh, code or that uh, ability to just turn the other direction just because we have to actually add that in. And so what I propose is if we jump back into our scripts, we're gonna do a small update. In our movement collision check, I'm going to pass in a value is enemy. Let me maximize this, minimize this, and this does not have to be this big is enemy. Then inside of our code for the horizontal collisions, if the current thing is an enemy, then their horizontal movement speed needs to be flipped to uh, the opposite sign. So if it's positive, become negative. If it's negative, become positive. Else we keep our current setup where we just set it equal to zero. The else clause will be applied to us. So I've now added an input condition or input argument to parameter inside here. So whenever I call my code back in my player state free, I need to make sure I update that portion to see it's giving me the little warning that I need to pass in one more argument. I say false, no, because in this, this is the player. However, back in my object enemy step event, I'm gonna set this to be true. Now that we have uh, this added little check, whenever we go about playing the game, the enemy is now will bounce left and right whenever they run into the wall. And so we see they now go back and forth. They might actually be going a little too fast for my take. I might drop it down from three frames to something smaller. But uh, there we go. They now move back and forth. Let me modify this horizontal speed. Let me drop it down to two. They're just a little too fast for my taste. Again, your game, you can play with these numbers however you'd like. But uh, just to show off in the room, the benefit of having the, let me move this guy a little higher, right click, or double left click, sorry. Inside here, we can go to variables and I want to set the horizontal movement speed to be negative two. Uh, he'll actually start going the opposite direction. And I want this person to start off with a little jump up into the air. That should help it uh, be distinct. And so by just changing these values for that one, 
enemy astronaut, that'll make it uh, unique to that one person. They drop into the world with those values and we see, oh, I actually did positive 10, so that meant he flew, fell down faster, but we did see that he fell in the opposite direction. Let me go ahead and uh, fix that. We want to go up in the y direction, so negative 10. With this update, we should now see the reflected operation for it to work correctly. Going to testing, there we go. We see this one person jump into the air a bit, and he starts walking in the other direction at the initial point before he bounces into the first wall. And there we go again. And so now that we've got that, we've got this logic for the enemy to move back and forth. Let's close this out and go back to our enemy. I want to go ahead and have a few more updates. I want to update not our enemy object. Uh, this is good for the moment. Let me minimize that and shrink this down. We don't need this so big. And let's jump into our bullet. Our bullet currently uh, does not interact with anything else in the world other than deleting itself whenever it runs into uh, the walls. What I want to add is a collision check with our enemy object. Here, this will just address uh, damaging enemy and so for us to do that with our other, what we're colliding with, the enemy in this case, I want to damage the target. And each of my bullets will just do a one damage. And then hit from is equal to other dot direction. This will just know what, uh, from what direction were we hit from with this shot. Uh, by referencing other inside of other, we're actually referencing the bullet. So whatever direction the bullet was going, it'll keep track of that. Then I make sure to destroy uh, the bullet. So we now have that. We now have a way to damage our enemy. We can also go in and update our ax step, or in your case, whatever melee object uh, that you wanted to use. Again, I was using ax, let me minimize that, uh, increase this size. Uh, I don't need to look at this at the moment, nor this. Okay, inside here, this was tracking us killing our enemy uh, by simply deleting them. Uh, this, of course, if we hit the enemy object, uh, then it goes through the process to figure out what we do with it. Well, I want to do something other than just destroying it outright. I want to deal with the damage properly. I'm going to damage the target for three. Then I also want to keep track of what direction I hit this from. If other dot image x scale is equal to negative one. This will check if we're swinging in the left direction, then hit from will be set to 180. Else the angle that we're hit from will be equal to 90. I'm oh, sorry, no, zero. And so in the previous setup with the bullet shooting at the target, it was as simple as just saying, okay, where was the bullet coming from? Here with the ax, uh, I'm instead checking what direction was I swinging? Was I swinging to the right or left by checking our image X scale? If X scale was one, we're swinging to the right. If X scale is negative one, we're swinging to the left. Then if we're swinging to the left, then a hit from will be set to 180. Otherwise hit from will be set to zero. And so it'll, uh, just mark that we're either hitting it uh, towards the left or towards the right. 
And so with this setup, we now have ways to deal damage, but right now our, our enemy doesn't do anything when it is actually hit. And so let's go, or actually close this out back in the workspace. And I want to go over back to the enemy. In our enemy, we're gonna go ahead and add a begin step. This will address drawing the dead enemy. And so inside here, if our hit points are less than or equal to zero, then with, and we're going to create instance and so create layer at the same X and Y positions and on the same layer, an object for our dead enemy. So uh, I'm going to do obj underscore enemy dead. Close that off, open curly brackets, and inside here, let me maximize this. Well, we don't have a dead object yet. Uh, let me go ahead and create one. obj underscore enemy dead. This will be grabbing, in my case, the dead astronaut sprite. Now that we've got that, we're going to revisit this in a moment, but back to our enemy. We create this new object. And we specify the direction is set equal to our hit from direction. Our horizontal movement speed will be equal to uh, length of the direction and the X. And I want to just throw it back uh, three pixels uh, in the correct direction. Vertical movement speed is set equal to length, direction, Y. And again, three pixels in the appropriate direction. And I just want to add a little upward mobility just to add to it. I'm going to set it to be three. So there's kind of a little jump every time that they get hit. Finally, image X scale is set equal to sign of our horizontal movement speed. Then destroy or instance destroy ourselves. So now anytime that we end up hitting the enemy and its health drops to zero, we will create a dead enemy object in that location and specify a few values, the direction it's gonna be moving in, uh, the hit, uh, horizontal movement speed, the vertical movement speed, and what direction it's supposed to be facing, and then destroy our normal enemy. Now we've got to uh, jump into the code for uh, the enemy astronaut uh, in a moment, but let's just see what this looks like right now. And so we've got that. Uh, we see, there we go, and it's playing the animation very rapidly. Same thing should happen if I hit them twice. There we go. So it's registering that we've hit them and they've died and it switches over to that sprite. But we need to flesh out the code for that sprite uh, in order for it to actually look correct. But we also need to get the hit uh, flash so that way it can be clear that we've actually hit our enemy. And so jumping back over here, we're going to actually add a event. Uh, we're gonna hit a draw event. I'm gonna just specify this. This is the hit flash. Whenever we hit it, 
it flashes out a bit. And so the hit flash code uh, isn't anything too dramatic. Uh, so draw self is just to make sure it does actually draw itself. But if our flash value is greater than zero, and so this explains that variable that we've been carrying around for a bit, decrease flash by one, we're gonna set a shader underscore set of shader underscore white. We're gonna have to create that in a moment. We're gonna draw ourselves again in this white pattern and shader underscore reset. So that way it doesn't impact anything else. So what it does is it draws itself, then on top of itself, it draws a white outline. Now shaders are not anything that we're gonna get into any detail at all uh, within the scope of the class, but we're gonna play around with it briefly. Let's go ahead and go into uh, where is the shaders folder. There we go. Shaders create shader. And inside of here, we're going to not mess with anything in here. Shader1.vsh. Actually, let's rename this to rename this to shader. underscore white. We're going to move inside of shader uh, underscore white FSH and maximize this, minimize this. We're going to leave that line of code there. We're going to grab this variable and this equal sign, throw it over here. And we're just going to specify this information vect for, and it's going to specify 1.0, 1.0, and 1.0, and that same variable, gl underscore frag color, and the letter a, dot a specifically. With this, this will create a white outline by maximizing uh, the RGB values uh, of this particular item and displaying that on top of our character with the rest of our code. Now, don't worry too much about this, but this just creates that white outline effect that we want to have. Now, if I run back into here, hit run, we should be able to see a nice outline every time that we hit our enemies. Jump into our testing room, hit the enemy. We see it has a little white flash. So here we now with the flash implemented can go ahead and hit the targets and we can see that they now flash whenever they are hit. Right now, since we don't have the complete uh, death object animation and coding set up, it right now just cycles between those two frames rapidly. But that is how Flash is implemented. Our last part for this video is simply implementing the code for our enemy object that is whenever they're dead. That only has two events that we have to address. One is the create event, add, create, add event, create. And then within this, we're gonna do a create event. Uh, let's rename this, and this is just initializing values. And we only have to set a horizontal speed, start it at zero, vertical speed, set that as zero. A gravity, we're gonna leave that also at 0 0.3, keep it consistent. Uh, and then check whether we are done with our little animation. Uh, then our image speed is set to zero as well as we don't want it to change frames until we're ready. Now that we have that set up, let's address our step event. What happens every step of the game? And this will be uh, falling and final. 
In order for this portion to be set up nicely, let's go ahead and have a simple check if we're done. We can, or sorry, if we're not done, really I should, uh, let me redo this, set this to a Boolean, false, we're not done, if not done, then gravity is impacting us, we're dealing with our movement collision checks, this is a dead enemy, so we're going to pass in false, and uh, we're going to do a simple check. If we are standing on an object wall and vertical movement speed is equal to zero, then we simply want to have uh, done be set to true. This will now ensure that we no longer address gravity, movement collisions, uh, and checking if we're done. Uh, down here in the else clause, all we need to do is set the image index, index to be equal to one and it'll lock it on that frame. Uh, in fact, I can actually simplify this. And in here, we just set the image underscore. Actually, no, because we want one frame of difference. So, yeah. Put that back where it was. There we go. Okay. Leave that be. That'll give us one more frame so for it to properly come to a compult and then swap. Now, while it's not done, gravity is pulling the body. The movement collision check uh, doesn't have to worry about it going over an edge. And we'll check once they're standing on the wall and the vertical movement speed is zero, then we're done. Set it equal to true, and then we lock our image index to the one of the static body with the head tilted. Now, assuming we typed everything in correctly, we should be good to display our game properly. Jumping into our testing room, we see the little guys in there. Uh, they walk back and forth off the edges. Uh, that guy died a little too high. Uh, we've got a little issue. If they're a little too close to the edge, uh, we can end up them dying into a wall uh, and causing that to stop. And so here, yeah, uh, we need to work on the collision mask for those sprites. Let's drop down to those sprites. Uh, where is the enemy astronaut dead? Here, the collision mask. See, it's different compared to this collision mask. So let's go ahead and jump up to where is our object. So object dead. Uh, we'll keep the same collision mask. No, not this. Uh, the collision mask, rather than being same as the sprite, will instead be same as the astronaut. That should address that. Now that we've got that portion, the last thing we need to address is us staying on uh, and not falling off the edge. That is where we introduce the concept of afraid of heights. And so let's get those. Hmm, it's still falling up. I have to play around with that to uh, address it. Oh, no, I know why it is. Uh, the collision mask I said is the problem. If we jump into the sprites and go and edit here, uh, manual rectangle. This sets a little too high. I'll address it uh, later on outside of the video to fix that portion. Right now, we need to get 
uh, the code to ensure that we do not fall off the edge. And so if we jump back into our enemy object in our step event, we simply need to add one little segment of code to address it being close to the edges. If we're on the floor and we're afraid of heights, and we are currently not going to be colliding into, uh, let's expand this. We don't need to look at this at the moment. If we're currently not colliding into sprite underscore width divided by two, uh, this will mean that we don't completely walk off the edge uh, visually. Uh, y plus one, one step down with a wall. Then our horizontal movement speed will be times equals negative one. With this, we're now checking, okay, are they standing currently on the floor? Are they afraid of heights? And if the next step that they would take would take them off of the map, then we want them to instead flip the direction that they're going to be walked on. Uh, no, not Spire, Sprite. There we go. Now, as the player walks back and forth, it should keep them And there we go, they fall back properly. Yes, I need to fix the collision sprite because they're being slightly above what they should be. But they correctly do not fall into the edges as it shows where they stay up on the ground. So, so yes, the issue was with my enemy astronaut sprite, uh, the origin point was too low. It needed to stay at the same spot as our other astronaut was uh, at 32 pixels in height. That addresses uh, the error that I was having earlier. So now everything properly is set up. The sprites are afraid of falling off the edges. The other sprites uh, have the standard values and now they walk around just like normal. And when they receive enough damage to die, they get hit back, they fly, and then the melee attacks address both direction. And then based off what direction we're shooting them, they have a little bit of added hit and impact as they're moving around. And so that's all that we've got for today. If y'all have any questions or need any assistance, just let me know.